Got that radial suspension. The back is coming very handy. Well, that's a pretty big crash. First major issue. Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're working on the Buick. My dad's over here acting like he's doing something. So, uh, what are we doing here today? Gonna do some upgrades? Yeah, that's kind of the plan. We got the new shocks in. I'm gonna start on the front. I got the new rotors in. So we had a little issue that he noticed right after race week last year. If you guys can see that right there, they're cracking. So that kind of sucks. We are stuck to a specific rotor. We we're gonna try to do a different one on the front, but we do have some new ones here. So we're gonna switch these out before we go making any big pulls. Uh, what's crazy is these things are like the whole hub and everything. From advisement from some other guys with the brakes that they want, the, if, it would've been better if these weren't drilled and uh, slotted necessarily. They would've been able to help hold up to the yeah, this is great for like driving and some of that stuff, but then also for the big racing and everything, you almost want just the solid single rotor. So, and after having the car, I would have done this in a carbon just to save some weight, probably just something new just to spend more money. But <laughs> uh, hopefully, I don't have another problem with that down the road. And here is the new shocks. Went kind of full send on shocks for this thing. We're trying to find some 60 foot. So, as you guys remember, watch, I'll throw some videos in here too. fought 60 foot hard anytime we've taken this car out to the drag strip we have battled getting this thing to 60 foot i think the best 60 foot is a 140 not trying nothing it's still like it's hit or miss if we would get tire shake and if it rattled the right. tire or whatnot or go out and spin we just we couldn't get it right no matter what we do we just other than pulling power out of the car the suspension would just not take it and would not 60 foot worth of crap in this thing talk to uh Mincer. this is what they suggested for their they got crazy good drag radial shocks they got their stuff on all like the baddest you know drag cars all the drag radial cars out there and everything so we're actually going to go ahead and put a canister shock on the rear and then some adjustable ones up front and this is what they recommended for this setup this style this everything this is what they said we should put on this thing they're also giving us some information on pinion angle and some of that stuff for right. just full setup. That's the only thing that's been limiting on the car right. by this whole thing of, of the build has been our 60 foot that we've been up against. Yeah. Everything else, it's, it's taken the, the power, yeah. the, the <laughs> half mile stuff, the cruisability, the... Yeah, everything's been great. Everything's been great. Really good. Other than when we try to port to it in the 60 and yeah. that's where it, it's kicked her butt every single time because we just we're band-aiding it with power and right this thing should easily go deep 120s if not a high one team it's pretty heavy car but definitely deep 120 60 foot and now on a 140 i mean on race week 140 150 60 foot and we just pour the power to it out the back and it go 174 mile an hour to go an 850 <laughs> hopefully we don't have to beat on it so far to go that and then also some of our other goals with this car is a 490 and a seven second pass hopefully this year with it and then I, I think we literally have the ultimate car. It'll drive anywhere. <laughs> It'll go sevens, four nineties, and two hundred and a half. It's then it's for sale. <laughs> yeah. So uh, probably not, but maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Guys, figure that out. But either way, that's what we're doing today. We're gonna get these put on the Buick. Get the rotors replaced since they got those cracks on there. And then this thing will be ready to head out to the track and start making some passes. We might even slap this thing on the dyno to see what it'll make power-wise uh, to start off the year. And then we got a few other little things we're gonna do to it. I think we're gonna go to a 275 tire on the back. We have those sitting over here just to see. That'll actually give us some more gearing since it's such a, it's over here buried, but we'll get to it. <laughs> it's over a pile of memories. Yep, Hummer's still here. 275, 60, 15, what a lot of people run. So we're actually gonna put those on the car. That'll help with gearing. We're gonna go ahead and get the front end pulled apart, start there and get shocks on it and get this thing back together. By the catch can or filter, so. Need to empty out the catch can. Had a little bit on the floor when we raised it up. Might, have, might need to be drained. I don't, I don't think so. I thought I drained it, but. We'll check it out. Have to check it and see. Sure That's part of right. race week prep. Oh boy. It's going over everything, making sure nuts and bolts like this one here. I was missing a actually a bolt, which was probably from when we changed the fans. 
You think you get everything tightened up, but it's just checking everything, going over her stuff, and that one happened to be missing, everything else, go back over the diaper from the one oil change. So after race week, the cars came back, did the oil change, did that stuff, otherwise nothing's really been changed on it. That's why we're doing the rotors, all that, and just going over nut and bolt and everything, but the car is just solid all last year. Everything went really, really good with it. No need to really, don't change it if it ain't broke. Nope. So. I just do my handy dandy little brake clean detail. Brake clean detail, <laughs> wipes it all up, go back over it. Four post lifts are really awesome. We just battle with this little issue right here. This is the jack tray that you can use, but you have to use like a bottle jack and stuff to get it. If not, you order these little airbags, which we need to get some, but it's kind of a pain to get the car jacked up on a four post lift. That's where two posts would be nice, but they're not. I don't know. We went back and forth on deciding what's the best route for that. Yeah. Route for that. We almost need both. Yeah. All the different apps. If you had one of each, it would be ideal. <laughs> what are you doing? We're cleaning. You do that? In this shop, we do it. Oh. Just a vacuum. Very we got a cap off and we had to start cleaning. <laughs> so this one's off so you guys can see here where it was starting to crack. Pretty bad on these outer ones really. That kind of sucks. Do you see anything on the inside James? Let's see. I think it did. I didn't see them. No, the inside ones look pretty good. I don't see anything on the inside. To, like where it causes it to make where it cooler cool it down a little bit quicker quench because, it more on the outside you know the inside's getting rubbed the same but I, actually i was looking at the brake head which i think that's just these brakes period but see the insides even wore more mm. than the outside hmm. it's interesting yeah it's just kind of different in the whole way things work and... oh over here cleaning again nice <laughs> Oh, yeah, a brake clean bath. Perfect. <coughs> Get that, uh, the regular coil over. What were those that you had on here? Just like a... They're part of the kit. They're a Verishock, I think is what the name on these things are. But I'm sure those are just made for just street driving general use. Yeah, not going 200 or 7s or 490s or no. trying to cut a 1-teen-60 foot. <laughs> yeah, they have lots of valving adjustment and stuff too, but as far as comparable, if I had to guess, the technology and the mints oh, are obviously, yeah. if I had a shock machine or somebody could do the two, they could tell you the... Oh, huge differences. Difference. Yeah. yeah, there has to be huge gains. That one is... Let's see. Now the trick is getting past that to that. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, look at that. There it is. No problem. Look at that. Not with the old. Fresh bear shock. See, and that's the thing, too, that I have 500s on here, and I gave them all the spring rate right of the car. And What do we have spring rate right now? They went with 450s. It's a little bit lighter. On the front, yep. I was just looking at this, we might have a little issue because this is set up for a year thing too. And now we got a solid spherical end on them too. So that's got to make some of the difference too, just tighten up the yeah. reaction of the car mm -hmm. stuff too. It'll probably be noisier. I don't know if I can handle it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're running into our first major issue. We can't get a bolt in and then the adjuster right here is already hitting on the A-arm right there. So we gotta figure this out. We can't spin it around because it doesn't give us enough room for that knob right here. And we can't flip them upside down because the body here hits on this mount. So, yeah. So unfortunately this is where it's hitting that adjustment knob. So what we're figuring is we'll just have to clearance this out a little bit. So then the knob has some uh, clearance here. So then we can get the bolt in. Not ideal, but I guess that's what we're gonna have to do to get those shocks in here. It's blowing it. Might have gotten lucky and not had to go all the way through the arm, just notch it out a bit. Thank goodness for some thick A arms. Ah, dang, check that out. Nothing a little grinder can't fix. Yeah, but it ain't, 
ain't sitting in the center. Not ideal. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, easy, easy, easy. That's on them snap-ons too. So now that we've got everything clearanced well here on the AR and we went ahead and preset these shocks to what we think is close, so then we're not fighting it as much when it's up in there. Uh, hopefully, hopefully we're close on it. So now we're just gonna get the studs out of this rotor and put them into these. And we should be good to put this side at least back together. So this side is officially done. Even put some new plugs in it. Getting ready to go there. Marking out the A-arm on this side so we can do some more modifications. <laughs> can never go perfectly smooth, can it? No, it never does. <laughs> That's what everybody always thinks it's gonna. <laughs> you just slap them in there and head to the track. No yep. problem. We wish it was like that. Ta-da! Now this side's done. Of course, it's the next day. We ended up stopping yesterday, finishing up this side today. But now we got both of the fronts done. We're gonna go ahead and move on to the back. Getting ready to jack up the back of the car. As you guys can see on these shocks, he's pretty much trying to use every ounce of the shock length that he could, because and we think it was still trying to extend it all the way and then it'd start rattling the tire. So we're gonna go ahead and come in here, get these out of there and get the new ones in. We're gonna reposition this upper bracket so we can get more like 50-50 on the shock and start there. Give us a good base to uh, get everything going. On the spring, they're 110. So about 10 less on these here. Yep. 50 less on the front, 10 less there. And those were, were those a double adjustable or just a single? No, they're double adjustable. So those were a double. They're strange. The only thing I might put a single adjustable on would be my Hummer. Well, there we go. But One day. Now we've got upgraded. Well, those all have them. Oh yeah, they're already there, huh? So those are out. These need to go in, but we do need to come up with a little place where we're going to put the mount for the canister dill somewhere up under here. Can it work so we're there, there, full extension so we don't end up ripping the tube out? Yeah. Wherever it can mount. This little guy. Which I know I can't be down in here because we can't get to it with the fuel cell. But... Yeah. Well, we'll get it in here and see where, see what we where got. it needs to go. Got that radial suspension look to it. <laughs> I'll extend it out. After reading our instructions from Mincer, they said to go ahead and drop the bottom bar up top. This car does have a crazy little three link in it. So that's actually what my dad's working on now is getting that top bar dropped down on the chassis. So he pretty much said that the car will not be able to extend any more past where the bar goes flat. So you need to get as much angle as you can in it. So then when it comes up and goes flat, that's pretty much where it's gonna max out. So that's what we're doing right now. And there it is, canisters are all mounted up. Pretty crazy back here when you just have these like hoses that are just chilling, but they got enough slack in them that they can move up and down with the car. So should make a huge difference. Now we're gonna go ahead and set the pinion angle what you do is measure the top of this, the top of your pinion here, add them together, they say in their instructions. And then he's gonna use the top bar up there to adjust it. So what he did is he has this handy dandy little angle finder. Then right now we're we're about one and a half is kind of where we're sitting. Um, pretty close to that. And so we need to get to about three to four on the pinion angle. And then that will help with the separation in the body. So as we start running the car and the rear end starts to lift, it'll bring the pinion angle up to about zero. You don't want it to go positive so uh being angled when the body comes up it'll equal out which should work out pretty well we need to lower the front down we got a little bit high up there so still need to adjust that a little bit so there we go it's about three and a half degrees of negative pinion make sure you got all the wires on right <laughs> well we'll find out if it's got a miss when we fire it up so everything's looking pretty good we got a pretty decent little setup in it put some fresh plugs in it I think the plan is actually tomorrow the next day to put this on the dyno, try to go for a new dyno record, but we want to go ahead and fire it up, make sure everything seems good with the new plugs and shocks. Everything's pretty decent. And then when we're on the dyno, we'll actually go ahead and put those 275 radials on it. So let's fire this thing up. Oh, might get into a four wheel drive. Yeah. I'll lift it up a little bit. That is weird. Yeah, I wonder what's grounding to make the, the heater fan streetcar life. So it won't start when that thing's running. Already broke down before we leave the garage. That's weird. So this thing has a heater, and the other day when we were car showing it. I wonder if that's my ignition. Is oh, I bet your ignition key's messing up. That's not the first time either. No. 
so it like won't go to the start. Now it's not running the fan. So it's like it's jumping the thing or something. 